Really great, it comes in a crate. The last server rack I got in a box got really torn up. The problem is how do you open this? The manual. How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is AO Lithium's Lithium Iron Phosphate Server Rack Battery Pack. 51.2 volts, so it has 16 cells in it, 100 amp hour capacity, a total of 5.12 kilowatt hours. Instead of using lugs, it requires to use these specialized plugs and they just snap right in, just like that. It's a lot more concealed and you won't have accidental shorts from anything. To take it off, you just push the button and it comes right off also. The insulation of the cables are rather thin. These are actually actually 25 millimeter squared cross section cables, which is equivalent to roughly three gauge wires. And so this type of wire is thinner than usual, but it has a lot of metal in it. And it also has a data communication cable, server brackets, so you can attach these to the side, and this will allow you to hang it in your server rack. I'm not sure why they're so protective over their screws. They've marked every single screw and on the chassis. It also has a sealing sticker. Unauthorized removal of this label will not allow for repair. I'm just gonna remove this anyway. There's a beefy on off button. You just push it, 52.8 volts. 30% full, it's a 100 amp hour battery, zero amps output right now. Each of these lights represent 25% state of charge. So if all of them are on, it's 75% state of charge or higher. These lights always stay on, so you can always see the state of charge without turning on the LCD. ALM is an error light. When the run light is blinking, it means everything is good. There's an address here that you can set. So if you have a lot of these units, you can daisy chain them together and you can send communication information through these ports. Press the menu function. There's a BMS parameter. Enter and you go into it. 52.8 volts, zero amp current, cell temperature. There's four temperature sensors, MOS temperature sensor and an environment temperature sensor. Escape to go back and then go down cell voltage. Cell one through four voltage, five through eight, nine through 12, 13 through 16, 30%, 100 amp hours, 30 amp hours remaining in this battery and it's done zero cycles so far. So we escape from here, go to battery status, enter. The battery's idle, there's various alarm statuses. There's no over voltage, no low voltage, no over temp, no low temp, no low state of charge alarm, no difference voltage alarm. This is the difference between cells. No overcurrent, meaning not over 100 amps. No reverse current. And we can do a protection status, the same stuff, over and low volt, over and low temp, overcurrent and short current. Failure alarm, sample line, charge MOS, discharge MOS, sample chip, SC time, over temperature count. How many times it went over temperature? Over current count. Two, this is probably resulting from their testing of this battery unit. Overcharge count, they probably overcharged it a couple times for testing. Over discharge count, four times. And then now we can go to gyro status, X axis. Doesn't seem like there's anything here. Version numbers, BMS version number, LCD version number. And that's the entire menu system. These packs are strapped very, very firmly and then bolted down onto the bottom of the case. Many other server racks I've seen, they actually have a bolt that goes across. So we'll see if this is good enough a hold down. It looks very, very clean. Instead of using typical cables to connect everything, they use a lot of bus bars everywhere. There's even a DC fuse. 200 amps, it's rated to break at 50 kiloamps at 200 volts DC. And if it's at a higher voltage at 350 volts DC, it will break as much as 6,000 amps. This is very necessary if there's some kind of short circuit at the output. For example, if your inverter is broken, it wants to short the battery output, preventing your battery from being overloaded and possibly cause them to overheat. So this is a really, really great safety feature. I really like what I'm seeing here because there's a T1 T2, T3, T4, four temperature sensors. Most of the time I see one, maybe two. So having four and it's secured very, very securely 
with these metal lugs, there's no way it's coming out. Manufacturers typically just use some thermal glue and glue it right onto the top or the side. And so this is built very well. The two positive terminals are connected with a bus bar. It comes out, goes through this fuse, and it goes to yet another bus bar into the battery. On the other end of the battery, there's also a bus bar that connects it together. And coming back, there's yet another bus bar that goes to the BMS. From the BMS, there's a bus bar that goes to the output negative terminals. You also have your typical battery sense lines. All these red wires snaking everywhere is to tap off of each battery cell. We can see B0, 1, 2, 14, 15, 16. The temperature sensors actually uses two wires. So two, four, six, eight, and the eight wires are over here. All these tabs are not connected by bolts or anything. They are spot welded. They look like it's very, very sturdy. The batteries are divided into two eight cell sections, each of them 24 volts or so. On each end, there are these casted aluminum blocks and it's strapped together with this metal strip. And the bottom strap is not metal. It's more like a fiber plastic type of strap. The metal strap is actually welded together. So there's no way it's coming out. These straps are actually not under high tension. So they kind of just hold the whole stack together. And these welded posts actually gives it some structural integrity. The entire thing can be mounted sideways. So the fact that these are metal and welded into place, it keeps it from kind of collapsing one side or the other. The manufacturer website says these are grade A prismatic cells. Sometimes when you look at the cell, it'll tell you what manufacturer they are. However, it doesn't say anything here. There's a QR code. On the bottom, there's a fiberglass sheet, just a barrier to keep the batteries from touching the metal panel at the bottom. All the bolts inside are also marked so that you'll know if they've ever been opened before. The way they built this makes it so easy to evaluate the entire battery pack. I just remove the top and it's all here. I really like how they put the orange on these high current bus bars. This battery has gone through a lot of shipping certification. The individual cells has gone through UL certification as well. So having all these certifications and all these safety features built in, including the fuse and four temperature sensors on the battery itself makes me personally feel like I can just run this in the house without worrying too much that it's gonna explode or overheat on me. This is absolutely the best server rack battery I've reviewed so far. If you're looking for something bigger than five kilowatt, maybe 20 or more, you can actually put up to 16 of these in parallel. That's a maximum of 80 kilowatt capacity. Let me plug this in, run some capacity tests on it and see how it runs. And I'm gonna unplug my inverter from the wall just to make sure it's not using any AC current and we'll discharge this. I charge it up and discharge it as much as the internal BMS allows and I got 99.5 amp hours. Pretty close to the theoretical maximum. So now let's remove the temperature sensor and see if that works. I'll just access one of the temperature sensors here. Put the screw back because it has the balance sensor on the same screw. Now we have the temperature sensor here. The lights right now is powered by this battery. There's an alarm state because the battery percentage is quite low. If the lights turn off, it means it's cut the output. Minus six, minus 12, it goes to minus 19. So the trigger is somewhere below minus 12. Officially, it's actually minus 20 C to 60 C. Now it's seven, so everything's starting up again. It also should cut off around 60 degrees C. For charging, it's a different range. It's a little bit tighter. For this, I'm gonna use a heat gun. 73, but it remained at 63 for a short time. Any of those four temperature sensors, if they go over temperature or under temperature, it will cut off the battery. So this is a really great safety feature. If there is some kind of short with the inverter, Somehow the battery output terminals are shorted together. It wants to draw enormous amounts of current. The fuse in there, it's gonna cut it off even at 50,000 amps. So I have a class T fuse over here. I poured over the data sheet on this particular fuse. It's actually rated better than a class T fuse because it has slightly higher 
current braking abilities. They like to use these in EVs. Now that I took off the heat, the temperature went back to normal, 34 degrees. It's just dangling right there. Lights turned on again, everything back to normal. Now there are other features with this thing. Sometimes you can have inverters that would communicate with the battery itself. Through these ports over here, you can daisy chain them together so that it can communicate with more than one battery. Right now there is still 19% battery left in it, but I'm gonna do a full load test. Try to draw five kilowatt out of this or at the 100 full amps. A small heater, big heater, heat gun, blow dryer. Let's turn each one of them on. 95 amps and over here it says 4.4. All of this is turning on 100 amps. It can definitely do it. The cables are getting a little bit warm, but it's draining really fast right now. I'm surprised it can put all these additional features and yet the price remains about the same. If I were to get a bunch of batteries again, yeah, I wouldn't mind having these. If you guys are interested in getting this lithium iron phosphate server rack battery from AO Lithium, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time. <laughs>